with merge that uh, there have been 12 complaints of misconduct that have been uh, lab in fact raised with the Department of Social Development in the Western Cape. Um, this is between 2012 and 2019 and of course this was revealed in a written response to a question by the ANC's Gladys Bakubaku Force to the current MEC for Social Development in that particular province. Now this question of course comes at a time when former Community Safety MEC Albert Fritz was fired by Premier Alan Windy following an investigation into sexual misconduct allegations against him and while of course the move to sec fritz has been welcome there are also some concerns on the process of reporting such cases and the difficulties that victims often have to endure during this particular process let's speak to advocate brenda madumisa who's the director at wise for africa on this particular issue uh, thank you so much advocate for your time now mec fritz of course has been fired and as well as resigning from the da some have welcomed Welcome this uh, and, and have also welcomed what the Premier has done in terms of, uh, you know, getting to this particular point. But also the process getting to here has also been under scrutiny because you look at the fact that the allegations emerged in November last year. Something could have been done sooner, though, could it not? Absolutely. And thank you for, for, for the invite this evening. Absolutely. But this is what happens with um, sexual harassment cases in corporate South Africa, in government, that... Once you report sexual harassment in the organization, and depending on whether you have a sexual harassment policy or not, the tendency and the practice has been that it takes almost forever for those allegations to be attended to and acted upon. Social development is not a, an exception to all of this. It has been going on in government for the longest of time. And if we were to ask the question to the Public Service Commission, uh, on how many sexual harassment cases have been reported in government since maybe let's just take three years, in the last three years, and get a, a report on how they were finalized and, and how they were finalized. We'll all be shocked to see how long it took government to actually even start the process of appointing a, an investigator or even instituting a disciplinary process in terms of their own policy. So this is not a, a, a surprise at all that you have had cases against Fritz, but also officials in his, in his um, department that have done this with impunity. And nothing happened to them. And because nothing happened, it continued, that the harassment continued because no one was being held accountable. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the challenge that we face, that the seriousness that we thought the government would take in dealing with such cases is mere words and just posturing most of the time and not act swiftly and promptly once they, 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 the allegations are made. Now, Advocate, one of the things that's also been quite disturbing at the back of what you're saying is the fact that, you know, Advocate Williams, who was appointed to investigate these claims and has since finalized her investigation, she says that she received messages from members of all different political parties and factions also trying to intimidate her to back off and not to proceed with these investigations. This in and itself is problematic because these pe people who are doing this are supposed to allow you know, th this particular process to unfold, especially given how serious these allegations are. And, and she would have received threats precisely because the individuals who were threatening her, one might have been also perpetrators themselves, or they also want to, this bro code of protecting those that we know have transgressed are perpetrators of sexual harassment or any other gender-based violence uh, uh, abuse. So it happens that they will close ranks and it has happened too often that we don't get make headway in these cases because there is this broke hold and closing of ranks and, and and not allowing the process to take its course and for for evidence to come into the open and to deal with it once it's in the open and people to face the consequences mm -hmm. of their actions right but it, it it's been the tendency in 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 the in the politics of this country and especially in government that we tend to close ranks and we want to protect perpetrators of, of gender-based violence. But these are individuals who would stand up in, on, on Women's Day, who would stand up on International Women's Day and, and make pronouncements on gender-based violence and why we need to read society of such. But they themselves are actually facilitating and protecting uh, abusers 
and 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 transgressors of of, of such of such acts. Mm. So it's not a surprise that she received threats. It happens that most women will be threatened not to speak out or not to report such, even though you have a sexual harassment policy or you have a grievance policy and you complain and it's not attended to. And we are dealing with cases, sorry, mm. um, we are dealing with cases at the moment with social development where they have not investigated sexual harassment cases that have been reported at national for that matter. So it's pervasive across the board. Now, Advocate, very briefly, we're almost out of time. There's also the concern, though, that sometimes victims don't come forward. And, of course, it's always a very difficult process for them. But at the same time, you know, those that report may be third parties and it may be viewed as, he as hearsay. And those that hear these allegations say there's nothing they can do until the victims come forward. But I wonder how should those that hear these allegations handle them in order to be able to deal with them decisively, despite the fact that they're hearing them from a third party so, so once you hear someone saying to you i have been sexually harassed don't dismiss it and and this goes to uh, those who are supervisors managers and and hr executives and hr managers once someone comes forward in an organization and said i have been a, a victim of sexual harassment don't dismiss it have create the space where they can safely relate their experience of what has happened to them and once you hear it then take the necessary action of going further to find out what has happened right mm -hmm. instead of vilifying that individual or even minimizing her words and starting to say that she is lying because that's the tendency and that's why many victims of sexual harassment don't come out because remember sexual harassment happens in in a in, in a place where power relations uh, come into play in, and it's power inequality that we, we find is about inequality mm. when you have a boss who exerts his power uh, right. or her power on you that that's what that that's what happens so we have to create an environment that is safe for all of us to come out and be open and talk about it and for organizations to act once it is brought to their attention all right advocate thank you so much for your time